everyone welcome back to our youtube channel zero analyst this is the project 2 video of our sql project series so today we will build this project library management system using sql and this is the project 2 now you can see the project title which i have given it here which is called library management system we will be using sql to create this project now this project is intermediate level and the data set which is kind of the library data set which i will be including in this project now if you can see more details about the project the task that you will be doing in this project these are some objective that you can see in the project so if you see the database that we will create which is going to be something like this which we will have a branch table in the branch table we have all this column which is manager id branch address and the contact number then we will have employee table which will have the employee id employee name the positions salary and the branch id then we will have the book table which will have the book informations like isbn number book title category rental price and all these columns we will have the member table where we will have the member informations and then we will have the issue status where we will have the book issued status record details in this table and we will have the return status where we will record the book return status so this is a traditional library transaction that we will do in this project now we will have to create all this table and we will need to build a relationship between them so in this project you will learn how to design a database from scratch you will learn about the constraint you will learn crude operations which calls create read update and delete operations in sql you will learn c task operations which is called create table as select and then you will learn advanced sql concept such as stored procedures joins group by and other concepts so this is how your project is going to be you will force a design a database like this and uh, based on this ERT then you will perform some of the create operations which is going to be create a read update and delete a task so here are some tasks which you will complete so this is the task one this is the task two so this is the task the task four and task five and then you will do some C task task which is going to be this task and then task again and then you can see some more other tasks that you will perform which is going to be task eight task 9 10 and task 11 and 12 so all this task you will do in this project and in the next video we will perform some advanced level sql operations which is going to be task 13 to task 20 we will also use the store procedures to automate the task in the next video so let's see the data set that we will use in this project so first let's see the books information so if you click on this books you will see the book data set that has all this column like book isbn book title book category rental price status author and the publishers we have branch informations which is the branch table we have employee informations which is the employee that work in the branch then we have uh, which is issued status the book record where the book has been issued and we have book return status which you can see it here so this all the tables that we will work so we will start from the scratch completely so let's first go ahead and download this data set from the github repository so you just need to copy a line of code with which you can see it at the end of this which is this code once you copy this code just go to windows command line or mac if you're using mac just go to terminal so let's go to terminal and uh, once you go to terminal you just have to type this code which is called git clone and this url so once you press enter it's going to download the file now before that you need to ensure that this file is going to be downloaded in a folder that is going to be your present working directory so if you want to see my present working directory i can just write something here called so you can just write something called pwd that's going to show you the present working directory so for me it's in the users so i can just write something like this which is going to be desktop if in case i want it to download in the desktop so it's called cd which is called change directory and i'm just using relative path so this is going to change the directory to desktop i can see it here for me it's in the desktop now i just need to paste this url which is called git clone and the url so this is going to download the file you can see it has downloaded the file now i will just exit out from here and let's go ahead and see the data so if you see here all this file has been downloaded now we have books information so if you just double click on it you will see the books informations we have branch informations we have employee informations we have uh, members informations and we have return informations so let's see one by one table so this is our table let's see so this is a return status table so you can see this table name is uh, return table so we have return id return issued id return book name and return date and the return book isbn so here we can see the return book isbn which is not mentioned at the moment 
now this is the return status now if you want to see the member informations so this is the member table you can see the member informations let me make it bigger so this is the member id you can see it here we have member name and we have member address and the, their registration date now this is the member table let's go to another table that's going to be maybe the books so you can see books table has the book information about the book ISBN and uh, we have book title book category rental price status author and the publisher informations let's see some other data we have the branch table so branch table has the branch ID branch manager ID and the branch address and the contact number so these are the information so we have so far now let's see any other table next we have the employee table so employee table has again the employee information so that's going to be the employee id employee name and the positions salary and the branch id so the first task we will need to create a database for this project so let's go ahead and launch pg admin 4 so I'm going to use this tool which is called PG Admin 4. Now if you do not know how to install Postgres SQL and how to set up PG Admin 4 tool. So you can go through the video descriptions. I will be adding a video of mine where I will be showing you how to install this Postgres SQL and the PG Admin 4. So this is fine. Now let's go ahead and first create a database. Now to create a database we will create an ERD like this which is called Entity Relationship Diagram where we will build a relationship. You can see it here. Okay. So I will just go ahead and create a new database so I'm going to use this database and right click and write something called create database so I will name it call library p2 okay project library project 2 okay so this is the name you can give any name now you can use any other users if you want to use it so for me i just want to use by default the postgres users so let's click on save now you can see library project 2 database has already created now i'm just going to select this database and i'm going to click this icon which is called query tool so here we will start building our logic so the first task which is going to be maybe just comment so i would mention the project name which is going to be library management system project 2 okay so this is the project name now first thing what we want to do is that we want to create the table right so let's create one by one table so first table we want to create the branch table so let me first go ahead and cancel everything here let's open one by one table so first we will create a branch table let's open the branch table in excel to see how many columns we have in the branch table so let's wait in the branch table we have one two three four columns so all this column name what i need to create a table so i'll just copy the column name and i'm just going to say first creating branch table okay now these are the columns i need to well while creating the branch table so i would say create table and name it called branch okay now what are the columns i need so i need all these columns so i will just cut it and put it inside this and for all these columns i need to tell the data types so let's see in excel let's see what is the data types we have so if you see it here so the branch id seems like where car we have which is text data types manager id also text branch address seems to be also text and the contact number which is also and the contact number is going to be text or int you can define in both ways so i will define it as varchar only which is going to be text so branch id i would say it varchar 10 so that's my first column let's organize this code now i just want the branch id that's my first column and next what I need is the manager ID so manager ID also varchar I am going to define it the same data types then we have branch address so branch address is also I want to ensure as varchar and then we have the contact number so the contact number I also want to set as a varchar now this branch address may have the longer text so if you want to see it here so though it has a smaller text but usually you will have the lot larger text so what you can do it here you can just 
set this limit to maybe something called 55 or you can check in excel like what is the maximum length so last column and uh, so i want to set the branch id as a primary key because this is going to be not null and this is going to be unique so let's create the first table so i'm just going to write drop table if exist and uh, branch so if in case there is already a table by the name called branch that's going to be deleted now before running this code if you want to see that i am inside this library project 2 that is my database and you can see the users and you can see rest of the other informations now if you want to go inside this database you can go to public inside the schemas and you will have something called tables where you can see the tables at the moment we don't have any tables so let's run this query so select it and run it so this is going to create a table you see the table has created successfully let's verify it and you can see we have the table which is called branch so that is our first table now let's go ahead and create our second table so after the branch i want to create the employees table so let's open this data set and let's set it to 1 or 250 or 200 now all this column i need so employee id seems to be where car name seems to be where car the position seems to be where car the salary seems to be int and the branch id seems to be where car so all these columns i need i will say that create table simple syntax and the table name i want to give as employees now what are the columns i want so the columns i want which are these columns so employee id i want to say per car 10 now next what i need the employee name which i want to say again per car this time i wouldn't want to say 25 this time i want to say 25 because name can be longer now positions i want to say per car 25 salary i want to say int or float anything is fine now the branch i want to say again per car okay so positions again you can check for me i think i would set it as 15 now to ensure that you have the correct limit you can just recheck the data to see what is the maximum length of the column so to see the maximum length let's say we do not know the maximum length of this column you can just simply write something called max and length and you can select this column whole columns just double cross it and you will see the maximum length is 16 for the name so we need to ensure that this limit is more than 16 so i have set it as 25 now this employee id why i want to set as a primary key so i'm just going to set this column as a primary key for now so let's create this table so before creating this table i'm just going to drop table by this name if this name already exists so so this is going to be useful when i want to drop it now you see the second table is created but i cannot see it i can just right click and refresh it you can see the second table which is employees table okay so next table what we want is that the branch is done and employees is done next we will have the books table that we can create so let's open this book table data set and uh, let's make it 200 now let's copy all this column so let's go back to sql and uh, let's create a new table called create table and i want to name it called books now the columns i need are going to be this columns which is isbn and then book title category rental price status author and the publishers okay? so let's first check this isbn that we have let's go to the books table so books table which is here you can see it here now this isbn seems to be a little larger but this is not a number you can see dash that is that means this is a bear car okay this is a text data types so we want to see the maximum length so to check the maximum length we can use the same functions max length and we can select the first uh, first cell and control shift down or command shift down close the brackets and you see the maximum length is 17 for isbn so we want to set the isbn and the data type is going to be where car so i will say where car instead of 10 i would say it 20. so that's my first column let's say the second column which is going to be books title now the title can be also larger so let's see the title so if you see the title here if you double click on it you can see the title seems to be very very large now again i can use the same functions in b instead of a so i would say b and uh, b36 so title seems to be maximum length we have which is 53 so i'm going to define it title which is 
may be 75 so that this doesn't give us any error when we will import the data next we have the category so let's see the category so category seems to be again in the books table so we'll go to the books table and uh, we will see the category which is this double click on it seems to be shorter so I'm going to use it like category as where car 10 okay next we have the rental price so the price I usually set as a float now again we can verify it based on the data set so it seems to be in float only so which is kind of decimal so I can say float so by default I don't have to define the number of decimal next what I need the status so status seems to be yes or no so I'm using Postgres so I'm again going to define it as a where car so where car maybe 115 next we need the author so the author name can be also again larger so you can double click on it you can see it here so it seems to be maybe under 20 is going to work fine so I'm just going to define it as 20 maybe 25 or maybe 35 next what I need the publishers so the publishers name we can just double click on it and seems to be a little large so I'm just going to define it as 50 55 okay so all the columns are done now let's go ahead and run this to create this table but I uh, will set this ISBN as a primary key because we're expecting this book ID as a not null and unique so again I will just drop if there is any table by this name called books and then it's going to create the table by name called books oops that's books let's go ahead and run it now you can see the books table created cannot see it but if you just right click and refresh it you can see the books table and let's create the rest of the table now let's see what are the other tables we need to create so books branch and the employees done next we want to create a table called members so let's see the member table informations so we have all this column so let's go ahead and kind of create a table called members create table name called members and the column I need oops. so I need these columns now one is member ID again that's going to be where car so all the IDs are same so where car 20 or 10 then we have member name now again name can be larger so I'm going to set it as uh, 35 or maybe 25 next one need the member address so the address can be larger large long text so we can define it as uh, 75 next what I need the registration date now this data type is going to be date type so we can just mention this as a date if you just want to verify it you can go back and you can check this is the date data types this is the address this is the name this is the member ID so member ID seems to be shorter so I can use just 10 now this member as a primary key I want to set so let's kind of go ahead and kind of run this code which is called drop table if exist and uh, we want to delete if there are new table by name called members and then we want to create the member table so member table is done now next what you want to create is the next table let's see what is the next table so the next table is we have the issue status and the return status so this issue status means the book issued details that you can see it here if you want to verify it you can see the book issued details we have the issued id then we have something called issued member id issued book now this is book name issued date and this is called book id which is isbn and the employee id like which employee has issued the book so all this column what you need so let's go ahead and kind of create one more table called issue table okay so create table what is the table name issued and status this is the name we want to give so let's go ahead and put all the columns so issued ID we want where card 10 so let's go ahead and kind of put it here now this one I want to set as a primary key so no duplicates and all the numbers are unique all the texts are unique next we want the issued member ID so that's going to be again where card 10 okay so next we have the issued book name 
so the book name is going to be again where car and that's going to be 75 because the book name can be long text issue date so it's the date when it was issued ISBN is going to be where car maybe 25 okay next what you need is the issued employee ID so that's again going to be where car 10 now this is our fact table so this table will be dependent on the member ID this table will depend on the ISBN which is book ID and book title this table will depend on the employee like who inserted and also the branch so this table will depend on all the tables so we will add the foreign key constant later on let's first create the table now the table is created let's kind of refresh it and let's see you can see the table book branch employee issue status and member the tables are created last table that what we are left with is called the return status so let's go ahead and create this table which is called return status now create table return status the column i need is going to be this so return id again going to be same as like per car and primary key and next what you need is going to be the issued id so the issued id is going to be again where car but not primary key next we have written book name so we can set it name as up to where car 75 because the name can be again long text so now return date so this is going to be date data types next we have the return book isbn this is going to be the isbn that we have in the book table so this is going to be per car 20 let's kind of run it and uh, let's run it drop table if exist and let's add one more line here as well called drop table if exist okay let's create the return table now the return table is also created let's verify it so now we have book table branch table employee table issue status member and return status all the tables are ready now all the tables are ready let's go ahead and generate an ERD for this database which is called project 2 so you can right click on it and there is something called create ERD for this database and you will see all the tables and their relationship so we will build a data modeling here now you can see we have all the tables but seems like they are not connecting with each other so we have not defined the relationship between them right so all this six table we have now you will learn how to do a data modeling so we need to connect this table with each other right so if you see this book table so book table has something called isbn so this isbn what we need in the status table which is in the uh, you know in the return status table and in the issued status table in the issued status table you can see here we have issued id issued member id so this member id will come from the member table this member id so that means this member id that if we see it here that that's going to be foreign key here because it's a primary key here same this book isbn that you see which is a book isbn this one this is going to be foreign key here because it's a primary key in another table so we need to define the relationship between them so we will just need to add some constraint here so we will add a foreign key foreign key constraint so the foreign key should be primary key in an another table and the primary key means it's a not null and unique in that table so we will be adding foreign key in this table which is called issued status so we need this column which is member id so here we need to add the foreign key and we also need to add a foreign key on this column as well and uh, this column as well we will add a foreign key because based on the foreign key we will connect this table with the rest of the table similarly if you see this branch and employees so the employee has something called branch id so this branch id is going to be foreign key because this branch id is the primary key so based on this is how all the table will be connected with each other so let's see how we can add it right so first to add a foreign key we can just use the alter commands you can add while creating the table or you can add it later on using simple alter commands you can say alter table and let's say first we want to add a foreign key in the table call in the table call return status or issued status okay now we will add a constant 
so the syntax is very simple we need to say add constraint now what is the constraint name so let's first add foreign key and uh, the foreign key that is coming from let's say first let's say first we want to add a foreign key in this column which is called member id okay so fk of members now this is just a name you can give any name here now we just need to write it called what foreign what constraint you are adding it's the foreign key now on which column we just need to put the column name inside this bracket so we are saying hey in this table we are doing alter and uh, well, alter same as like modify so we are modifying this table and we are adding a constraint and the constraint name we are giving call fk members and what constraint we are adding so the constraint that we are adding is called foreign key on which column on this column now foreign key to become a foreign key of a column the column must be a primary key in another column right so here we need to say something called references and in which table this column itself is a primary key now if you see in the member table in the member table this column itself is a primary key right so let's see the member table here you can see the member table so this column is the primary key right so they both column are same so here you can say members which is the table name and the column okay so let's run this query now if you see this erd again now you can see here normal table sign is here now it's going to add a gray you know the key like this okay so after we create it so let's go ahead and run it so members spelling m e m p e r s members table of member id so now the foreign key is being added so that's the first foreign key let's add some more foreign key in this return status in the issued status table so now i want to add foreign key call fk dot books so from the books i want to add a foreign key which is going to be on this book isbn so book id issued member id which, which is done next what you need the book isbn so on these columns and uh, coming from books and in the books table i think it's ispn let's verify the column name in the books table it's isbn yeah correct so this is the second constraint let's run it you see the second constraint is being added now let's add one more constraint that's going to be for let's see in the second third constraint that we need to add which is going to be on the employee id like which employee is being which employee is adding the information so that's going to be the employee id so i'll just copy this here and uh, on this column i want to add the table name that we are getting this column which is called employees and in the employees table we have a column called employee id ID. we can just verify the name column name the correct column name in the employee table so let's quickly see what is the employee table okay it's imp id so that's correct now this is going to add the third constraint now all the constraints are being added so now let's just right click on it click on refresh and click one one more erd which is create erd now this is going to give us the data modeling now you will see the data modeling for now so this branch has no connection so far this employee seems to be connected with this table you can see it here and uh, you can just drag it end of here so the employee seems to be connected the member is connected with this table which is called the issued status now we can just drag it next we have uh, this which is a return status so the return status should be connected with the based on this return status if you see there is a column called issued id so based on this issued id we can set this issued id as a foreign key because the issued id is a primary because once the book is issued then only somebody can return the book right so we can set a connections between this issued id and this issued id okay next what you can do between this branch id and uh, in the employee so in the employee we have with this branch id so this branch id we can connect with this branch id so let's add some more constraint here so next what i need i want to add a constraint on this table call employees and uh, i would want to add branch fk branch is the name i'm giving now on which column which is going to be branch id column so we can just re-verify in the employee table so we have something called branch id which is coming from 
branch ID of branch table. Okay, so branch of branch table. So this branch ID is coming from branch of branch table. So based on that, I'm adding one more foreign key. Let's kind of run it. Now we just need one more constraint. So foreign key that's going to be on the return return status table. Now that's going to be fk issued status table. Okay, this is just the name I'm giving. So here I have something called issued ID. In the return status table, I have something called issued ID column. So that column is coming from this table, which is called issued status table. Issued status table of issued ID. Now we can just re-verify the column name, but the column names are correct. So let's just uh, refresh it and click one more ERD for the database. Now this is going to be our final ERD. So let's see. Now I can see all the tables are connected with each other. We just need to do the proper modeling here and we can say branch first we want to set the branch this side and uh, so this is going to wear branch now branch is connected with employees you can see it here okay branch has connections with employee let's kind of put it here okay now this employee is connected with the book issuance because this employee is going to issue the book right let's kind of drag it and drag the issued here let's drag the return here so we have the branch here which is kind of put here let's put it here okay next where we have the issued status so this is our main fact table now we can just drag it maybe here so we just need to spend some time to kind of organize it in so this is fine now next what we have is that going to be this member id so member is directly connected with this table which is called issued table because the member is getting the book so it has simple we just want to drag it so this is kind of a little funny it takes some time for you in the postgres to kind of set a proper design now for now i'm just going to kind of leave it like this okay let's drag it here okay Now let's see here. So this branch has the connections directly you can see it here with these employees. Okay, next we have this employee which is going to issue the book. So that has directly connect with this table which is called book issuance with this column. Okay, now in this table, this is now our main fact table. So this table has a book information which is based on the book ID that is book ISBN that is coming from the book table you can see it here okay next we have this table which is this one so let me explain what I want to show you here if you want to see there is something called one to many okay so let's see so it says one to many okay so that means one branch can have many entry in this table that shows this one to many now if you see here as well also this is one to many okay that means one employee can have multiple records enter in this table which is called this employee id right so one employee can have multiple records in this table because one employee can enter multiple records so this is how the relationship is built now this is the erd that we have created okay for our library project now let's start solving the question so i'm just going to save it for now and uh, I'm going to save it call inside these folders and I'm just going to create a new folders call project file v1 so this one I'm just going to save it as uh, project ERT schemas okay 
so this is the main table structure now the part is we need to insert the data right so there's two way you can insert the data manually or i have an insert statement so that you can use so let's go ahead and open a new query tool and then we can just load a script called insert statement the data that we have downloaded there is something called insert queries so if you just load this data so it's going to import this data once you run this query okay so you see it's importing this member informations it is importing this branch informations it is importing this employee informations this book informations this issued status and everything so once you load this you just need to click at the end and you can just click on this play icon so this is going to insert the data so we are getting some error which is called value too long for character varying 10 so there are some limit issues that we are having on one of the column which is called varying character 10 so let's see now we just need to check this schemas so we have defined this varchar 10 in one of the columns where we are getting larger you know length so this is one of the common issue so let's go ahead and check so for the employee id 10 we have given fine for the books we have given 20 and category we have 10 so i think this is what causing issues so let's say 25 okay now again you cannot give it here so i can just delete this book now again you cannot delete this book so you can use the alter command to modify the data types so you can say alter table now table book table and you can say alter column now which column the category column we want to set and you can say type and this fair curve we want to change the data types from 10 to maybe 20 okay so I think this is the column creating issues let's kind of run it you can see it has updated the data types of this category column now let's go ahead and kind of run this insert again this time hopefully it should work uh, still it's kind of giving an error so we need to check some other as well so this is fine member ID seems to be fine okay issued ID seems to be also fine issued member ID also fine issued employee ID also fine okay we have written ID that's also fine issued ID also fine 10 now these are the only columns we have right so in this case we can import into each table to see which table we are having the issues okay so to import in the table we can simply go ahead and go to schemas and go to public go to books let's first import to books so let's go to import and let's go to select the data now make sure this header is enabled if you're using windows you may get this header as disabled so you just need to make sure this is enabled otherwise you will be getting error so let's go ahead and select the file now we are importing into the books so let me just select the right data which is called books let's import into books okay so the books data are imported now let's import into branch so we need to import branch now you need to follow this hierarchy okay first import to books then branch so we will see import this time the data to branch okay now again this branch is going to work fine now here i think in the branch we have the issues let's click on this issues and click on this and let's see where we have the issues so here we have the issues call column to that's called contact number okay so this contact number we are getting larger text you can see it which is plus nine one so this one we need to fix okay let's go to schemas and let's go to branch and let's run alter table branch now we can say alter column and which column so that's going to be contact number and let's set it as type where car 10 to maybe 25 okay 10 to 15 maybe 20 so this is going to update the data types of this column now let's go ahead and import so we have imported two books let's see the count we have 35 books record let's see the branch we have uh, zero branch so let's kind of now import to branch okay so you can see import and uh, select the branch which is going to be this click ok now the branch is imported 
Now again, we can use this import statement, which is to import rest of the column. So we have imported to, we can import to members. So let's run it. You see it's imported. Let's import to branch. It is already imported. Let's import to employees. Imported. Now let's import to books. It is already imported. But again, we can just run it. You will see it's going to give you a duplicate warning because it has already imported the records. Okay. Now let's go ahead and import the status and let's go ahead and import to the return status so id is 101 is not present in the issue okay so 101 we need to fix in the issue table we have something called is 101 okay so we can just delete one record which is called is 101 or we can just check if we have this issued status okay so we can just delete is101 and uh, up to 4 okay now we have deleted some of the rows which are not available in the issued status because of the foreign key it's not allowing okay now i'm going to update this so that you get this access you get the data of this right so you just need to run this okay all right so now all the data are imported we can just quickly verify it so let's go ahead and kind of create a new query so i will just go ahead and close the rest of the erd which i don't need it and uh, i'm just going to select this database which is library project 2 and i will click on open query tool now here let's see the table and let's see all the data one by one okay so first let's see the table which is called books so let's write select everything from books let's see the data we have in the books so you can see in the books we have all the data that is here okay now let's see the branch so i can just go ahead and select everything from branch to see the branch data now you can see we have all this branch information which is five branches. let's go ahead and kind of select now from employees so we have the employee records which is employee id name position salary and the branch id let's see now for the issued status and the return status so we want to see issued status okay so we have all this issued status we can see we have 35 records and we want return status return status so in the return status we have 14 records you can see it here okay so it seems like the data is imported successfully now we can solve the problems okay project task okay so let's go ahead and kind of copy the question from the github so the question that we will be solving today so let's see the first question okay now if you go to this github again you can solve your own question based on the data based on your analysis but here i have included some question based on the data set so you can if you don't want to go through the create database you can just use this query this is going to create the database for you okay then you can use the insert query to insert the records so first we will perform CRUD operations which is going to be create a read update and delete statement so let's see the first task so this is the task one and uh, the question says create a new records by this book ID and this is the book name and this is the classic and these are the informations basically that will go into this book table so we need to add and insert records in the book table so if you want to see the book table you can simply go to the books table so all these columns you need to put the informations right so this is going to be insert statement so you can say insert into and what is the table name is the books table name now you can define the column name this is optional if you want to define it or if you don't want to define it if you have specific columns it's better to define it okay which is here so let's say first thing that i see it's isbn so i can say that isbn is the first column where i will insert the records second i have the book book name so this is going to be book title so 
book title is the second values that I'll be inserting then we have this is the category so we have category then we'll be adding the value into this rental price so that's going to be rental price then we'll be adding which is called status so that's going to be status then we'll be adding which is going to be the author so author then we'll be adding call publishers publishers okay so these are the columns where we will insert the values so you just need to write values and inside a parenthesis you can define the records that you are adding so make sure that you are defining a record that goes to all of this column so i'm just going to copy from here to here and let's put it here now barker has to be inside single quotes in postgres you cannot define it in the double quotes so this is the first value that goes to this isbn then title then category which is here then rental price then status author and this publishers so let's run it and let's verify it now before running it you can see we have 35 books now i can just run this code. one line of code here to print the records okay after inserting so now you can see we have 36 records so this record has been added recently right you can see which is classic okay so this is fine now let's kind of go ahead and do the second task which is going to be this one which is update task now this is update an existing member address okay so let's copy the task so, so the task two says update an existing member address so we can check the member table so here i have not I need to select select everything from members so mm, members m e m b r s So you can see the members table let's say we want to update one of the member address maybe this c101 and this address from 123 to 125 so we can define it simple way like this update and it goes with set and where so this to this where is not mandatory but if you don't define where it's going to update everything for that table so update as soon as you say update you will need to select the table which table you want to update so we want to update in the members table which column that you need to put in the set you can put multiple columns so we want to update the member address now what informations you want to update in the member address so this is a bear card so i can say from 1 to from 1 to 23 i want to update it as 125 and main street okay so this is what i want to update but if i just don't define this where it's going to update for all the members so i would need to say member here using any of the key so member id equals c101 okay now this is going to update the record from 123 for the member c101 now we can again print this last statement to see the records after the update now you can see the 101 which is here updated and from 123 it has updated to 125 now let's see the task 3 which is going to be a delete statement let's copy it from here to here and it says delete a record from the issued status table okay now this is the objective you can see it here objective is that delete the record with the issued id isb104 okay now it can be again difference as well if in case you don't have isb104 let's see the issued status table so let's go to select everything so we need to say 104 i think 104 is not available so we can just update maybe delete 107 okay so how do you delete a specific records you can say delete from and the table name which is status and i can say where and you can use any of the key maybe you can use this issued id because this is the primary key this is the right column or you can delete by the book name as well but if there are multiple records by the same book name that's going to delete for all the uh, all the rows with the same book name so best is the um, delete using this primary key so you can say delete from status table now if you don't define this where it's going to delete everything from the table so we can say where and issued id equals now this is a where card so we can define it inside a text which is called is10 maybe 7 okay now this is done let's kind of print it mm, did it from okay where here you just need to say where and the column name issued id should I still reference from the return status update or delete table issued violate the foreign key constraint 
So we can just check. Okay, we cannot we cannot uh, delete this because this issued ID is dependent on because this issued ID has another records which is in the return table. So we can delete something else, maybe one one two zero. Okay. So we can say one one two. Okay, one one two. Let's see. Again, this one also in the return table. So we can delete something which is not being returned so far. Okay. So let's see something else, maybe 120. Okay. Now this is also seems to be in the return table. So we can check the return table and we can check something which is not available in the return table. So let's run it and uh, let's say okay we want to delete something which is greater than 20 okay 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 okay maybe the 20 so the 20 should be updated so we can say which is not here delete from the issued status where this issued ID okay here you can see start from 7 and goes to 20 so maybe more than 20 okay so 21 we can delete this one okay this one is deleted because this ID doesn't exist in the return table now this is happening because we have defined the constraint okay now let's check you will see the 21 is gone okay now you can use this where condition which is in the select statement so that's going to print the records and as we do not have the records it's going to print null for now okay all right so this one i'm just going to change it with 1121 okay so that was the task 3 now let's see the task 4 that we have so in the task 4 we have this which is simple statement simple retrieve statement it says a retrieve all the books issued by specific employees which is called e101 okay so for this we just need to see the issued status table now in the issued status table we can see all the book that and the, they issued by the employee id right so we want to see all the book that are issued by this employee id which is called es e101 right so this one you can use in the where conditions you can say where okay so this is going to show all the books that is issued by this employee employee id e101 does not exist okay let's just check again so this column name is issued imp id okay so the column name is i issued imp id so you need to use the correct column name so let's see how many book this employee has issued so this employee has issued two books okay now let's see the task five which is list the member who have issued more than one book objective use group by to find the members who have issued more than one book okay so we need to find out the member who have issued more than one book we can already see this member has issued more than one book now we can again use the issued table so we can say select everything from the issued table and then we can see this issued employee id right we can do a group by by this employee id and then we can do a count on this issued id to see how many book that is being issued by each employee id okay so we can say this column which is issued employee id next what i need is the count count of issued id okay and i'm going to save it as total book issued i just need to do a group by by one or the first column okay so that's how i will have each members and the number of book they have issued but we need to find the member who has issued more than one book so we can use the having count here having count of this issued id greater than one so this is how we will select the member who has issued more than one book so these are the member informations now if you don't need this column you can simply comment it out or delete this column and delete this comma so these are the members who have issued more than one book so in the task six that we will do that is using c task which is called create table as a select statement now this is very very useful to create summary like this you can see it here okay so so let's copy the task from here and uh, let's put it here so i'm just going to name it called c task and the task is 
create summary tables use acetas to generate a new tables based on the query result each book and the total issued count so we need to find out each book and the total issued count so let's see the book table select everything from books table now we can see we have this book table right but we do not know how many times they have been issued right we don't have this data we do have the status something like that so now we can just do a join between this book and the issued table to find out how many times they have been issued so i would say books table as b join and i will say issued status as i s t okay ist okay so this is the name i'm giving and i'm saying on ist of issued book id which is book isbn and b isbn okay so i've done the join now let's see the data about the table okay so now we can do a group by, by this isbn and we can do a count on this issued id that is coming from the issued table to see each book and how many times they have been issued so that is what we want to find out right so we can say b dot isbn you can see count of star or count of ist dot issued id okay so this one we want to save it as number of issued okay number of issued this one i want to save as a number of issued let's kind of run it so i need to do a group by group by by one okay so we have each book id and the number of time they have been issued okay now if you want the book name as well also you can say b dot book title okay so just add one more group by here okay now let's run it again <clears throat> now this is this is kind of created table right and then every query that you run that kind of created table so we want to create something called C task which is called create table as select statement so that means every time you don't want to run this code so what you can do you can just write something called create table and you can just give your table name so the table name i'm going to say book counts this is the table name that i'm giving and i can just say s okay now if i just run this query it's going to create a table so next time i can use this table name called book counts okay so this is going to give the book summary the latest one okay. let's see if the book was issued yesterday as well that is also going to include it or maybe the book that is being just issued okay so you can just select everything from a table called book counts now, okay now you can see that we are getting the count right even if you delete it still this is going to work because this is going to save in the database now if you want to verify you can just click on refresh and here you see there is a new table called book counts that is being created now inside this table there are some logic that is being run which is this logic so when if you delete it still you can use this table which is called book counts so you can create different different tables based on the requirement let's say you want to see the daily orders you want to see the monthly orders you want to see the weekly orders you want to see the annual orders so you can create different different this type of c task which you can use instead of writing the whole queries okay next time all right so this was the task six now let's see the task seven so in the task seven we have which is retrieve all books in a specific category very simple so we can simply say specific category like we can retrieve that everything from the books select everything from books let's see the data and we can say the category is classic okay so you can say where category equals classic c capital it's a case sensitive so we need to define it same way so we can see all the books that is from one of the specific category that was the task 7 let's see the task 8 so in the task 8 let's see it says find the total rental income by each category so we need to find out each category and the total rental income so we can do a group by by the category and then we can do a sum on this rental price okay but thing is that this is just the book records if the book is issued two times three times right so we will have the incorrect result so we will have to do a join between this books and the table which is called book issued okay so we need to do a join between the books and book issued so i'm going to just use this join which is called books as b and book issued as st and i will do the join same way and here I am going to select 
what I want to select is the category which is coming from book table which is B dot category and I want B dot rental price okay so in the rental price I can do a sum now if you see the total records okay okay so we can do a sum here sum on this rental price we can simply do a group by by this one so we will have each category and the total rental price okay now you can see rental price if you want to see that number of time so you can just use a count of star so each book and each category and the number of time that is being issued okay you can see the number of times which is showing here okay all right so that was the task seven let's that was the task eight let's solve the task nine now so this is here it says list the member who registered in last 180 days so we can check if in case we have any members who registered in the last 180 days so this says select everything from members let's see the member table now i think i don't have any members that registered in last 180 days but we can just run a query let's say if in case you want to select a query like this what you can do is that you can say where and you can say register date let's do one thing let's insert the records in the member table which registered yesterday okay so i'm going to say insert into members okay now what you want to add is member id member id i want to add then i want to add member name then i want to add maybe member address then i want to add registrations date okay so i'll just need to check if this spelling is correct so let's add two records here so the first record i want member id is c11 17 and name i want sam and i want the last name not required so i want member address is 145 main st and uh, registration date i want to edit like 2024 06 01 okay so that means this record is for last month right so let's go ahead and kind of add one more record but 119 john and let's say 123 okay main street and the date i want to edit here as five okay so this all the records are in last 180 days okay let's kind of import this and let's see so record are imported let's verify it now you see here if you see sam and john they are imported in 2024 and this is the date right so that means we want to see if in case we have any members which is registered in last 180 days so we can simply say where and we can use this column which is called registration date okay and we can say is this date must be uh, you know less than or maybe must be greater than equals to okay last 180 days right so if you see the today so the current date is today is 22 of august right so we can say current date current date minus 180 days okay now again we can use the interval here so i can say interval 180 interval 180 days just put it inside a query okay now i can see we are getting the members who registered in 180 days so this interval is going to basically this side if you see this side is going to select the current date now if you see the current date current date is going to be the today date right so the system is going to select the today date from the system which is today date now from the today date we are minusing 180 days using this interval functions 
so that means if you minus 180 days from that day this registration date must be greater than or equals to that day so that is how we select the members who have joined in last 180 days okay so simple date functions which we have done and we got the result here okay now let's go ahead and solve the task 10 it says list the employee with their branch manager name and their branch details okay so let's first see we will need select everything from branch so select everything from branch let's see if you have any information about the employee in the branch so seems we don't have any information but we have the branch id and let's see in the employee table select everything from employees so in the employee table we have employee id name position salary branch id so basically based on this branch branch id we can get the, their manager id right because we need to find their manager name you see you can find their manager id then based on the manager id we can get the employee name from the employee table that is how we can get their manager name with the employee information so that means we have to do a join here which you call self join so i can just go ahead and name it called as e1 now both the table i can join based on the conditions which is called branch id okay i would say join and uh, i want to join with branch table so branch sb on b of branch id e1 of branch id okay so we will have each employee id name position salary branch id and their manager id now based on this manager id this manager id itself is the employee id right so if you see here this manager id one e109 so you can see e109 is this employee which is daniel okay so daniel is going to be manager for john okay so that is what we need so i can just do one more join and i can say join of what join of this employee table as e2 now what is the conditions now the condition is going to be the manager id from b okay so b dot manager id equals e2 dot employee id okay so if i just run it i will have each employee and their manager informations along with their informations and their manager informations and their uh, you know manager name which is going to be here so this is their manager name okay so we have two managers you can see it here all right so we can just select the columns that we need here so first column what i need is everything from the employee table so i would say e dot e1 of everything okay so next what i need is the manager name which is coming from again e2 table so i can say e2 dot imp name because employee name is a manager so i can just save it as a manager okay now i need maybe the branch id so i can get it from the b table so i would say b dot branch id or the branch address or whatever else you want let's go ahead and run it so we have employee id name positions salary and the branch id and their branch id and the manager name now i need the manager name here so b of manager id what i need okay which is coming from the branch table let's go ahead and see it now you can see we have employee id we have employee name position salary branch id manager id and their manager name now this based on this manager id we have checked in the same table which is the employee table and then based on this manager id and the employee id we got this name which is daniel and then the second manager is laura i can see it here okay so daniel has employee id 101 and laura has employee id 110 so these are their you know kind of the employee who re reporting to them all right so this was the question number let's see what was the question so this was the task 10 so task 10 now let's see another two tasks in this video and the rest of the task i'm going to do it in the video 2 which is going to be in the advanced sections of this project and let's see the task 11 so task 11 says create a table of book with rental price above certain threshold okay maybe certain threshold like going to be 10 dollars okay now we need to create a book table of book with the rental price okay so we need to create a new table so if you see select everything from books 
so this is the table we already have right so so we need to create a table where the price is above certain threshold okay so we, let's say we define it as like seven dollar okay seven dollars okay so we can say select everything from books where where this rental price greater than seven dollar okay so let's see how many books falls into this category so here you can see all these books now i just need to create a table so you can just use a ctas here so you can say create table and you can name it called books uh seven okay something like this you can just name it you just need to use s books let's keep some meaningful name books price mm, creator 10 okay seven it's like coming little long but again this is a meaningful name so let's kind of run it now this has created a table called books greater than seven so you can say select everything from this table called book price greater than seven dollar okay now you can see all these books who who has a price which is more than seven dollars okay now you can define different threshold based on your requirement okay so this was the question number 11 let's see the last task which is going to be the question number 12 so the question number 12 is that retrieve the list of book not yet a return okay so the book which are not being returned they are being issued but not yet a return so we can say here select everything from issued status table and we can see all the books that are being issued so you can see we have issued so far 34 books okay and we need to check how many books are being returned and how many books are not being returned because as a librarian you may want to see the books that are not being returned correct so this problem we can solve using sql okay so let's see how so we can do a join left join so we can say select everything from this issued status and we can do a left join with the return table so we can say left join return status now what is the common conditions the common condition is this is issued id in this table and if you see the return table as well so in the return table also we have something called issued id okay let's see so in the return table we have something called return date and we have issued id okay so this based on this column we can do a join so we can say as ist and as rs okay so you can say ist dot now ist dot issued id equals rs dot issued id okay so the join is done let's select everything now now you can see this is we're getting everything so but we need the book which are not being a return okay now if you see the book that is being returned that will have the return id a row doesn't have a return id that means the book are not being returned so now if you want to verify it if you see this id should id cs if you want to verify you can see this issued id is107 was uh, issued on this date and if you want to see the return date so it was a return this is the return id and this is the return issued id and you can see the return date correct so this that means this was a return right so that means if the book is not being returned so it will not have return id so we can see here where rs dot return id is is null okay because that is how we will select all the book which are not being returned so these are the 20 books which are not being returned now if you want the distinct book id so you can go ahead and kind of select distinct ist book ist dot book id or maybe the isbn or the book title or book name okay so you can say anything whatever you want so we can say should it should book name okay so these are the book which are not being returned so far so you can see 20, 19 books are the book which are not being returned so far but total 20 records so maybe one book we have two quantity so that is not being returned so all right that is how we have solved all these 12 tasks now let's see the task which we will be solving in the next video so these are the advanced tasks now if you can see it here 
so the task 13 says identify the members with overdue books write a query to identify the members who have overdue books assume a 30 days return period display the member name title issue date and the days of overdue so this is one of the really common tasks in library you want to analyze like the member and the you know overdue days okay and how many books they have and what is the overdue counts okay then this that you can maybe uh, you know apply some penalty or fines okay so task 14 it says update the book status on a return a write a query to update the status of book the book to available when they are returned based on the entries in the return table so as soon as there is a book that is being added in the return table so the book status in the book table should change from no to available or yes okay so this is the task 14 that we want to do now this one you can do it a manually update statement after the return statement or you can do using a store procedures so as soon as you update something it should automatically update the book table and the chance from no to available or yes in the book table okay now the task 15 says branch performance report create a query that generate a performance report for each branch showing the number of book issued number of book return the total revenue generated from each rental okay so 16 tasks it's a c task you can just go through the 16 number task then we have 17 number task okay then we have these are the basic tasks we have 18 number task which you can see here as well now we have task 19 which you need to solve using store procedures so you can see it here task 20 we need to solve using store procedures i have added all the explanations now you can see the reports here you can write your conclusions about this project here and that is it now you can and you can modify this author details you can just write your name and other informations that's it for this video guys thank you so much for watching the video till the end if you have any suggestions if you have any feedback if you want to solve any other question you can write down in the comment box and you can get all this data and everything from the video descriptions have a good day see you next time take care bye bye